question of Resonate is that when I finished writing Slideology, I was like, well, slides are looking better, but the presentations were still crap. So I knew the solution would be found in story and storytelling, and I took about a three-year walk through story, woke up at about 4 a.m. every day and worked until about 11, just learning everything I could about story for a few years. And then I built a deck, like all of my books are built in a deck, if you can believe it. I built about 20 models and slides and I printed them in color, put them all over the wall of my office and I invited in three trusted friends. And uh, one of the slides had a itty bitty spark line. It wasn't even developed, it was just this little zigzaggy line in the corner of one of the slides. And I remember the um, Apple's speechwriter for the CEO at the time, he was like, uh, that little, if you can really do that spark line thing, that is gonna be like a crack. <laughs> so I took everything, flipped the whole thing on its head, focused on analyzing, I started analyzing um, all these speeches. And when I made the discovery, I always knew speeches, really good ones had a, this kind of like, rhythm and cadence to it. And I thought if I could really find what that rhythm and cadence is, I knew it was based in story, but that cathartic rise and fall and rise and fall that a great speech could do, I was like, wow, this, that way the spoken word could really change the world if I could figure that out. And then once I figured out the shape of that and figured out what was doing that cathartic rise and fall as you're appealing to people move away from what is and adopt what could be, um, and I realized the shape was true. I'll never forget a very poignant moment in my office where I, I did, I fell on my knees. It sounds really dramatic. I was all alone on a Saturday, but I did. I fell on my knees and I started to cry. First thing I did when I knew it was true was I looked up what Goebbels wrote for Hitler. He was his media, um, media guy and it mapped perfectly. And then I had like this moral dilemma. Like, do I release this to the world? What's going on? Why, why me? Like, why did I see this? And uh, I decided, you know what, there's more good people in the world and there were a lot of things that could advance human flourishing if I release this to the world. Decided to release it to the world and uh, I've never looked back since. It's been a beautiful journey.